Hi, everyone. Welcome on the Audi stand. You just discovered this morning, let's say, the first European reveal of our new concept car, the Audi Scarsfair concept. But we will not speak about technology during these next 15 minutes, but about social impacts of autonomous driving. My name is Frederick Krosh. I'm the head of the digital department of Audi France. And please welcome on stage my colleagues from Audi AG, <laughs> Sakya Lexken, <laughs> who is project lead communication working on the social impact on, of autonomous <laughs> driving. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Saskia, we just discovered this wonderful car this morning. How will the Audi Skyfair concept impact the future of mobility? Yeah, um, as you've seen um, from the outside, it just like, looks like a really beautiful car. So the first thing we can say is that automated driving will not change the exterior design fundamentally because uh, aerodynamics will still be really important, especially um, when driving fully electric. Um, however, you can see that the interior will change really radically. So you might have pedals or steering wheels that can be folded away. You have um, seats that can turn so the passengers can face each other. So this will mean a whole new driving or traveling experience and uh, yeah, more time to yeah, relax or even work or just um, enjoy the time um, on board. <laughs> For sure. If we are coming back a little bit more about autonomous driving, maybe our audience didn't know about the famous five levels of autonomy. So autonomous driving is going from level zero, so the car is not able to do anything, to level five. This car is level four. Level four. Maybe you can <laughs> tell us a little bit more about those different autonomous levels. Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, zero would be with, with no assistance, with no help. And then we're going to start with level one, which has uh, some assistance function, as most of us know in the cars today. We go to level two, um, when the car is able to, to hold the line on the streets or help you with braking. And then... Uh, Today standard, level two. Yeah. For Audi cars. And um, moving on to level three, that would mean that the car can support you in very um, defined situations on defined tracks, for example, driving on the highway. And um, then level four is, is the next step, and we're expecting to get this in the second half of this decade. Um, and yeah, the sky sphere gives a glimpse of how the future then will look like. And yeah, I forgot level five. <laughs> <And> that's <laughs> the uh, final one. The final one, and um, then fully autonomous, um, where the driver doesn't have any tasks anymore, and um, yes, actually not able to drive anymore. But this is a different use case. Um, when we have this concept car, we have drivers who still want to, maybe want to enjoy the driving experience. Um, so we can change and say, okay, I want to drive myself or I will um, hand over tasks to the car. But with level five, that would be a use case, for example, uh, going in the city um, for shared mobility, and at Audi, we're looking at the use case for ownership cars. And um, within the Volkswagen Group, we have um, Volkswagen commercial vehicles, and they um, take care of other use cases like for shared mobility. OK, that's for the technological part of autonomous driving. But autonomous driving is going to have also, let's say, impact on everyone, on the society. It's about ethics. It's about law data, regulation, and what is Audi doing to answer those kind of questions? Yeah, I think everyone has experienced um, during the last years that uh, yeah, laws are changing, test tracks are opening, so there's a lot of going on, and um, many people have questions. What, what does it mean for me? How does it really work? Can I trust the technology? And um, yeah, we founded seven years ago an initiative to address exactly those questions. Um, yeah, to, as Audi, to build a platform to exchange with universities, with politics, with lawmakers, um, yeah, to just get the exchange on those topics and open questions uh, going. And for example, in 2019, um, we conducted an international survey and asked people in seven countries, are you ready for autonomous driving? Do you have any fears? Do you have any open questions? And we saw that um, it depends on the country how open people are to technology. 
Um, it might not surprise you that in China, people are really affectionate about new technology, really open to it. Um, in Europe, a little bit, um, yeah, some more worries Different here. Um, yes, but uh, so that was one uh, result. And then last year we did a study where we talked with 20 experts um, from the field of data, law, and ethics um, to open some of the questions we found that uh, move people when talking about new technologies. And our goal is to broaden the acceptance for this technology so when it's ready, when it can be applied on the road, that people are really looking forward to use it. Okay, and a new study called Society with AI like artificial intelligence has been carried out to offer possible solutions and simulate public discourse regarding the new technology and the mobility landscape of the future. What was the scope of the study and what the results did came out up with? So um, what we did was that we asked the experts, what is your vision for mobility in 2030? What will it look like? Because um, with our Audi strategy, we're also addressing this, uh, this length of time until 2030. And um, we asked them, what obstacles do we have to overcome to make, to turn this vision into reality? So that um, what's the main question and what do we need for social acceptance for the technology? And um, the keywords there are safety, responsibility, trust, and um, that's our task as an automotive company to get people to trust the technology in the first place, but also to trust us as a manufacturer. And uh, yeah, historically speaking, there was always some mistrust when new technologies like elevators or trains um, were introduced. Um, but the experts in the study were quite optimistic that we can overcome this uh, when people can experience the technology firsthand. So that's why we're here at uh, VivaTech and um, see that there is a benefit not only for them, but also for society, for example, in terms of safety. Especially safety is a crucial point. So trust into the technology, into brand or car manufacturers. But society trends to demand a zero error tolerance. Let's say algorithm has to be safe at all especially for autonomous driving. There is no such thing as 100% safety. How can we overturn such demand of 100% safety, no error possible? Yeah, I think what is important there is that the technology will only be applied when it leads to fewer accidents. And um, yeah, today most accidents occur um, not because of the technology, but because of the human, we have to say. Um, also, we tend to um, overrate our own abilities, but um, yeah, we get tired, we look at our smartphone, or we are occupied with other things, um, so that's a cause for accidents, and the technology is never tired, so this will, this will definitely help um, for the goal of safety. However, we have to know that also a machine cannot be perfect, so we have to, yeah, to um, talk about expectations, um, on the one hand, we have this um, utopia of autonomous driving where everything is going really smooth, but our experts agreed that it's, uh, it's a long way to go there because we, in the meantime, we have a mixture of cars who are driven um, highly automated. We have drives that are driven still in a convenient way, so it will be um, kind of a messy situations on the street. <laughs> and um, of course, we're doing everything to make it as comfortable <laughs> for the passengers. Transition phase is going to be, let's say, one of the challenges. Mm. We spoke also about, let's say, social acceptance. Technology seems to be there, almost ready, but what about the social acceptance? And how can we increase the social acceptance of new technologies? Mainly with the knowledge. So getting to know more about the technology, how it works, what is going to um, get done with my data, um, so that's, that's a base uh, for trust, um, definitely. And um, as I said, we also have to talk about um, managing expectations. What can the technology really do and what can it maybe only do in the next 10 years? Um, yeah, but uh, in general, I think the technology can really um, improve and add value to society. Also, for example, in terms of inclusivity, 
So right now we have some people who might not be able to do a driver's license, for example, because of disabilities. Mm -hmm. And um, so this could also be added value by autonomous driving. So being there at Vivetech, presenting the technology, explaining it is part of the <laughs> answers.